Does anybody have their book with them? Anybody? No. It's a big old thing. I don't blame you. I'm carried around. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get that? Oops. Let me play. Thank you. Should be two. <laughs> Let me see what the section titles are called. 4.1. Yep. We're only doing 4.1, 4.2, and then we jump into. Um, 4.6. They were scaring me because I went to this big old meeting yesterday and I felt so weird. It's like the only one there in a t-shirt and jeans. Everybody's all professional. And then I was the only one that knew what I was doing. It was so weird. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't feel so bad about the way I'm dressed. Um, <laughs> but they were talking about this Laplace thing because apparently the people at the university were not teaching Laplace. And I'm like, how can you not teach the Laplace? It's in the Texas state requirements that you have to teach this method. And they're like, oh, <laughs> like, oh my God, y'all are the university people. Um, I won't say which university. But when we looked up the thing, um, they did have this in here and they did have the systems because the other guy was saying, oh, they don't learn systems until they're in DE2, which would be as if you had taken this as the DE course and the linear algebra course separate, the DE course, um, doesn't go over the systems of equations. They wait until they get into the DE2. Whereas in this course, we get both because you're probably not going to be taking DE2. Maybe, maybe not, okay? Um, but if you do take DE2, you kind of have a heads up because you are going to see systems in this class, okay? So what we've been doing right now is we've been solving um, DE equations, right? One equation. Every single time we were given one DE, and we had to solve it. Once we learn this Laplace um, transform method, we will be allowed to solve systems of DEs, which means I have two DE equations and only one set of equations is supposed to satisfy both, okay? Just like when you had two linear equations and your answer was one point and those coordinates had to satisfy both of the equations, right? So it's the same sort of thing, but it's the system. So it gets more complicated. However, this method is restricted in that it only allows you to solve systems of DEs that are, um, what is it called? Initial value problems, okay? So only if I have specific information about coordinates will I be able to actually solve a system, okay? Later, once we get into the linear algebra part, which is a bunch of matrix stuff, which is cool because then this, this part's not so bad. All the, all the um, integrals and derivatives and stuff is not as heavy, okay? Um, but once we get into that part, into that linear algebra part, at the very end, we tie it all together. So we tie all the linear algebra junk and the DE stuff together. And what we'll do is we'll use the linear algebra techniques. One of them is called eigenvalues or eigenvectors. And we'll use that to solve general system of equation problems where there is no initial conditions on them, okay? But for chapter four, we're stuck with just trying to get to the point where we can solve a system with initial conditions, okay? So let's see. First thing we have to do is figure out what a Laplace transform is, okay? Because we have to use that information in order to solve the DEs, okay? And not only do we have to transform it, then you're gonna have to transform it back, okay? So you're gonna totally change the DE into something new, but then you have to change it back into the original. Remember when you were doing integration and you would use substitution, right? You would throw U's in there, but then eventually you had to take the U's back out, right? It's the same thing with the Laplace. You're gonna throw in a Laplace transform, and what a Laplace transform does is it changes your variable, okay? It changes your variable with a specific relationship, and that relationship is this definition right here. So it's saying that a function in the variable T can be plugged into this integral, and then you'll end up with a function in terms of S at the end. Okay, so it's a specific kind of transformation. This here is where the transformation occurs. Okay, doing this integral is what is transforming the function in T into a new function in S. Okay, 
And what they're hoping is that the function at the end is a little bit easier and nicer to mess around with than the function that you started with. Although that integral looks really ugly, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, we want to be able to transform our functions. That would be nice, right? But eventually, we're going to have to transform them back. Okay. Not only that, our DEs, because they are DEs, what makes it a DE versus a regular equation? What makes a DE equation a differential equation versus just a regular equation, like a quadratic equation? Why is it a DE equation? Does anybody remember? What's in uh, it? Derivatives. Derivatives, exactly. So not only do I need to be able to Laplace transform a function, I also need to be able to Laplace transform a derivative, right? So 4.1 is baby step, right? This is what a Laplace transform is. This is how you plug it into the formula. Eventually, they'll just tell you all the answers. <laughs> and then we don't have to do the long way anymore, okay? But there are going to be some problems in your homework where you have to do it the long way. So that's why I want to cover it the long way, not just jump straight to the chart, okay? So 4.1 is just establishing, yes, this formula works and it will change the letter, right? It'll change the variable for us. Um, once we've kind of established what's happening here, then we're, you just use formulas to transform everything, okay? Um, so that's 4.1 in a nutshell. 4.2 is going to be inverse Laplace. So yes, you changed it to S, but I didn't ask you for the answer in terms of S, right? I gave you the problem in terms of T's. So you need to be able to reverse that transform and get back to T's, okay? So that's part one of 4.2. The second part of 4.2 is Laplace transforming derivatives because I want to Laplace transform my whole differential equation, which means I need to Laplace transform functions and their derivatives. And then when I'm done, I won't have any more derivatives. I'll just have a bunch of functions in terms of S. Then I can go back and inverse Laplace, right? And get my answer to the problem, okay? So that's what 4.2 is about. The plazing um, derivatives and then inverse Laplace, okay? 4.6 is putting that information together to solve equations and systems of equations, okay? So we're going to be putting everything all together. So first we start with the first one. And I may get into the inverse Laplace because it's just a bunch of formulas. It's not so bad. Um, but we might, we might and we might not have time to get into the derivative of Laplace. Okay? Again, I don't like to rush anything, right? I just like to go and then if we have time, we have time. If not, we not. It's okay. Um, so let's go into this one. So we are going to have some problems where we have to use the definition. So that's why I put this in the title. Because if it says use the definition, you are not allowed to go use that chart. Okay? You have to use the definition. And guess what? There will be one, one on the test where you have to use the definition. Okay? Because I need to make sure that you can do that. Right? Um, then after that, they're all just use the formula, use the formula, use the formula. Okay? So for right now, we're going to use a definition. So the definition says I have to integrate um, e to the negative st f of t from 0 to infinity. So when I'm done, I'm not going to have plus c's, right? This is a definite integral. So I'm not going to have those plus c's. I'm just going to have numbers or answers, and that's it. Um, be very careful. I have to be very careful. My fives and my s's look a lot alike. You're going to have to be very careful with that, okay? It's easy to confuse yourself with the fives and the s's. I try to make these like as boxy as I can make them, but sometimes it still happens. So be very, very careful. And if you catch me doing it, make sure you say something, okay? Because it, it happens. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into here. So if I'm going to Laplace... And the book will teach you how to just use like a different letter instead of writing this. I don't do that. I just use the Laplace. Because if I start going and putting in the other letter, the capital letters, people start to lose focus as to what they're doing. But if you leave the L in there, then at the end, you know to remove the L, right? So it'll, it's like a trigger to make you remember this problem's not done, okay? But for now, it's not going to matter because I'm only really working with one side. 
So zero to infinity, this is standard. This has to be there, okay? And then I'm gonna have e to the negative two t minus five. And so my job is to figure out what this integral is, okay? So this will definitely um, help me with that. I'm gonna pause this real quick. Okay, so what do we do when we have things with the same base? What happens to those exponents when we're trying to multiply things with the same base? You add them? Yes. So then this will actually become negative st minus 2t minus 5 dt. Now this is just an exponential function and you have to be careful. Oh see look there they are going and looking the same again. Let me make my s red. Okay. S is yes it's a variable right but it's not the variable that we are concerned with is it? So when we're doing this we're going to pretend that that s is just a constant like any other constant like the 2 and like the 5 okay so don't stick that that trip you up that that's an s okay it's gonna pretend just like if it's a constant which means I can multiply by s's in here and divide them out I can do whatever I want with s's and it's not gonna mess up my integral right it's not like the t's I can't multiply by a t here and divide by a t there it's gonna completely change the problem Okay, so just keep that in mind. Because this is just an exponential, there's no functions of t in the front, right? I can just use u substitution. It's gonna look really weird, but I can use just u substitution. So if I let u equal what's up there in the exponent, let me make my s red, okay? What would du be? And remember, you're going to be taking this derivative with respect to t. So t is the variable. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be negative s minus 2. Remember, s is like a constant. So I am totally okay to multiply in and divide out constants. All I did was divide by negative s minus two on both sides, right? And I ended up with this equation here. So now I know what to replace dt with and I know what to replace that whole exponent with. So this will become e to the u times du over negative s minus 2. And then I'm going to take this because this is like a constant here. It is not my variable of concern. So this s, negative s minus 2, can just come out to the very, very front of the integral. It's not going to affect the integral. And that's an easy integral to integrate, right? Now that we've made it so. <laughs> so what is the integral of e to the u? It's just e to the u. And I still have to evaluate from zero to infinity. But can I, you're not supposed to plug in infinity, but I do it anyway. <laughs> you're supposed to take the limit as the x goes to infinity, but whatever. <laughs> that's what we're doing but we're gonna write it just like totally not formal at all okay but I can't plug in the infinity or the zero until I have the original variable okay so make sure you put back the original variables so back sub the use right so this is going to become e to the negative s t minus 2 t minus 5. 
and then I can plug in the zero and the infinity. Now, I'm just gonna plug everything in. We'll make sense of it later, okay? So I'm just gonna plug in the infinity Everywhere I see a T, actually, not everywhere I see an S. Because it was DT, wasn't it? Which means these bounds belong to T. So that's what I get when I plug in infinity. It's what it looks like for right now. Now I'm going to plug in zero. And the red S is just for me. It's not because it has to be red or it has to stand out. It's just so that I don't get it confused with the five. Okay. What am I going to end up with when I multiply, who knows what that is, when I multiply it by an infinity, and I multiply this one by an infinity, and then I minus a number, what am I going to get for that exponent? A five. Not a negative 5, but a negative infinity. This is going to be negative infinity right here, right? And I don't, I think I chumped off the rule, but the s is supposed to be greater than zero as well, okay? So if s itself is greater than zero, and then I throw a negative in front of it, now it's a negative number, isn't it? And a negative number times an infinity is going to be a negative infinity. So I've got a negative infinity here, a negative infinity there, and a negative five. If I combine all of those together, I'm just going to end up with a big, huge negative infinity, okay? With a little five extra, right? Now on the other side, what do you end up with? This will go away, this will go away, and you'll just have the negative five, right? What happens to the exponential function as the exponent is going to negative infinity? What happens to this? If you have to use your graphing calculator, which I don't really tell people to use, I just remember what E looks like. E looks like this, right? As my x's are going in the negative direction, what is my y value getting close to? Zero. So that thing there in the box is just a big fat zero. Which means I don't even have a first term at all, do I? Because zero times this fraction is just going to be a big giant zero. So really all I have is negative e to the negative 5 over negative s minus 2. And if you were to look in the back of the book, that is not going to be what's in there. There's too many negatives here. When you have a negative variable at the bottom, they don't ever leave the negative variable at the bottom, okay? So if I were to factor that negative out of the bottom, I would actually have s plus two at the bottom, right? And then the negative from the top and the negative from the bottom would wipe each other out. And so what you will see in the back of the book is this, okay? And normally, normally, sometimes, it just depends on how formal you are, most people that are real formal are inclined to take that negative exponent and stick it downstairs, right? But just for the purpose of the future <laughs> that you haven't seen yet, we don't like stuff that doesn't have an S in it downstairs. 
okay so leave only the stuff with the s's in it downstairs everything else that doesn't have an s leave it upstairs okay if you get into that habit then later it it'll just be second nature right I don't know if I should break you in now or wait. How many of you love partial fraction decomposition? I'm sorry. You're going to have a lot of partial fraction decomposition in this chapter. That's why I say this test is harder. Because there's a lot of it. A lot of it. Like every freaking problem you have to do. <laughs> partial fraction decomposition. And you see that denominator, right? What if there was another S plus 3 next to it? Then I have to do partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so that's what happens. <laughs> okay, it's just warning you, just warning you. It's not yet, but warning you. Okay, let's try another one. This one's weird, and you do have one in your homework. So I wanted to make sure we went over one so that way you weren't completely freaked out when you saw it in the homework, okay? So we're still using the definition. I'm still gonna stick my function inside that integral, right? Um, the thing is, is that that, that integral applies for any function that is defined from zero to infinity. Is this function defined from zero to infinity and continuously? We do see that there's a break here, right? At one because they're using one function for part of it and then a whole nother function for the other part of it, right? However, at one, are both functions at the same spot? If I plug one into this function, what do I get as my y value? One. one. And if I plug, well, there's nowhere to plug in one, but what is the y value for the second function? One, they're the same y value which means these graphs are connected, okay? And as long as they are, you can still use that formula. It's just gonna be weird when I set up the bounds, okay? Because I have to use this formula, this function from the bounds zero to one. And then I have to use this function from the bounds one and on, right? So all that's gonna happen here is instead of just one big fat integral, you're gonna have to break it up into two integrals. You're gonna have from zero to one, and then you're gonna have from one to infinity so that you can do both of them because they are both part of the same function. So I'm gonna have e to the negative st, and I don't have any fives in here, so I don't need to use the red pin anymore, um, times t. And then here I need to do e to the negative st times 1. Okay, now depending on if you're using the rule in the back of the book and you know how to use the rule in the back of the book, or if you do this by parts, the first one does have to be done in a special way because you do have a function of t times another function of t, okay? The second one does not have two functions of t. It just has negative e to the st dt. So the second one's going to be a whole lot easier to integrate than the first one, okay? So for the first one, I'm going to actually do by parts, but I'm going to use the tabular method by parts so that I can do it fast, okay? So the tabular method says I'm going to tear this apart, my u's and my dv's, so we have t and e to the negative st. What is the derivative of t? One. one. What is the derivative of one? Zero. Zero. Good. Now we're going to do the, the integrals of the e parts. Okay. 
the, sh the fast shortcut way, the pattern that has happening, right? Say it again. Nothing. You didn't think of this? No, no, I was. A. Oh, S T. Okay, so the shortcut or the pattern here is that you get one over the derivative of this. What is the derivative of this? Negative s. And then times the original, e to the whatever, right? That's the rule or shortcut for finding integrals to exponential functions, okay? This is just a constant multiplier. So when I go to the integral of that again, I'm going to get the exact same thing, aren't I? Right? But if I multiply that out, isn't that just 1 over s squared? positive right so I'm not gonna look at this anymore because I just it was like my middle step right I'm gonna look at what I got after I multiplied it together and then tabular method says we go in a diagonal and then the first one's positive the second one's negative okay and we don't have to integrate again because if I integrate again isn't that guy gonna get multiplied by zero it's gonna disagree disappear anyway right so you don't have to keep integrating So then this guy here is going to become t over negative s e to the negative st minus 1 over s squared e to the negative st. I still have to evaluate it from 0 to 1, which I haven't done yet. And we've actually already done the answer for part 2, the second part. Because we did it right there, didn't we? Didn't we already integrate e to the negative st? So we already know what that one's going to be. But we do have to d evaluate this part from 1 to infinity. So I'm just going to keep this one in brackets as well. So the first integral is the first set of brackets. Second integral is the second set of brackets. This is all my side stuff. So let's see. Let's plug in 1. I'm going to pull this negative to the top. I just don't like it in the bottom. So I'm going to get um, negative 1 over s e to the negative s. Because 1 times s is just s, right? When I plug in 1. Then minus 1 over s squared e to the negative s again. That's what I get when I plug in 1 for all the t's. Now I'm going to plug in 0 for all the t's. So we get 0 over negative s times 0. Normally I don't write this, but I am writing it for some reason. It's already done. I'll leave it alone. We'll figure it out later in a minute. Now I'm going to do the second one. So when I plug in infinity for t, and then I plug in 1, This is what I have so far. Just plug them all in. Do it. I know it's a lot of writing. And you just want to like put the answer already. But just do it. Just so you don't mess anything up, right? <laughs> and then if you do have the next step wrong, you could backtrack. Well, how did I get that? And you can see where you made a mistake, right? So just play it all in. I'll put my little ones here. Right? Okay, now I'm actually going to multiply this stuff out and then we'll still simplify some more. So this term right here is just going to be negative 1 over s e to the negative s. Is this just a line up here or is that a negative in front of the... Here? Yeah, right there. That's a negative. Mm -hmm. I took this negative that was downstairs 
and I put it in the top. Okay. The second term is going to be a negative 1 over s squared e to the negative s. What about the third term? Yes, you have a big fat zero up here, right? Which means that this whole fraction is a zero. And when you multiply a big zero times anything, the whole thing is going to become a big fat zero. Okay? However, this next term, what should I be writing down for that next term? Negative one Almost. Have another color? Yes, I do. Remember, there's a minus sign here. And that minus sign has to get distributed, right? So what am I really writing down right here? Mm-hmm. Oh, nope, it's not even S. What is S times zero? Yep, there you go. And do I need to write e to the zero? It's just the one, right? So since I'm on a video, I'll erase it. <laughs> and we just have plus s squared. Now we can go on to here. Now you have, what is that? That was just a mark. Okay, you have negative 1 over s, and then e to the negative some number times infinity, which means I'm going to get e to the negative infinity. Here we have the double negative, but that one's obvious, right? And then we're going to get negative s. What happens to this term, the negative infinity? What happened to it the last time? goes to zero. So e to the negative infinity will make this whole term turn to zero. Okay? Remember we looked at the graph, right? And as the exponent goes up, the little y value goes to the x-axis, which means the y value goes to zero. Now, do we have any like terms over here? I said this one and this one. And what happens to those? Mm-hmm. Going to wipe each other out. So I'm going to leave my positive term in the front. And then I'm going to put my other term next to it. And that's, that's it. I mean, we did it, right? It's just not going to look like that in the back of the book. Okay? Only thing they do in the back of the book is they have the common denominator, might as well just put them together over the common denominator, right? So they write it like this. And here, you could try to make the S's go downstairs, but you're not. You're gonna have, half of the problem's gonna have S's downstairs and the other half isn't. So just leave it alone. There's no way to force it, right? Just leave it alone. That is it for that problem. Now we get to cheat. Okay. <laughs> now you're going to have to write this down. Let me make sure everybody's got that. Anybody still copying that? Okay. I'll wait. <coughs> the next page is a bunch of writing. So you're going to have to take a minute, write it down, or not write it down, and go look at the video later and write it down. But it's all the formulas, okay? You're going to want to have those handy when you're doing the test. Unfortunately, you're not going to have them when you're doing the test. So you have to memorize these guys, okay? And then the applause has its own set of formulas too, right? But you'll notice it's just the opposite of the first ones. It's not like you have to memorize two separate. <laughs> You just have to be able to look at left side and right side of the same set, okay? I 
I may put them on. I have to remember. I'm going to have to go back and look and see if I gave them formulas last semester. Okay. So here, are you still, are you good? Okay. Here are our formulas. Now that we know the formulas, for the rest of the homework problems, you do not need to do the long integral and all that stuff, okay? As long as it doesn't say use a definition, you are totally okay to use these formulas, okay? So I think there's only a few of them, maybe two or three, that make you use a definition. All the rest of them do not say you have to use, they say use the theorem. And if I use the theorem, I'm just using formulas. So they're telling you if you have one, if I were to plug one into that Laplace definition and calculate the integral, I'm just going to get one over s. And then t to any power, no matter what power it is. If I were to plug that into that integral and evaluate that integral, you end up with this fraction, whatever that power was as a factorial, so it'll be a number in the numerator, and then in the denominator, you're just basically adding one to that power. Exponentials, whatever you have multiplied by t, it'll just be s minus that number. The other ones are the ones that are going to get a little bit mixed up in your brain, okay? So sine and cosine, sine and cosine have the pluses in the denominators. Do you see that? Look at all four rules. Sine of kt, cosine of kt, and then hyperbolic sine of kt and hyperbolic cosine of kt. Look at all of their formulas. I'm going to push this up just a little bit. They all have s squared and k squared downstairs, right? Except the sine and cosine regular have a plus and the hyperbolics have a minus. The way I remember is my Pythagorean theorem isn't sine squared plus cosine squared equal to one, right? That's how I remember that the sine and the cosine should have a plus. For hyperbolics, sine or I don't know how you say that. Sin. <laughs> I don't know how you say the hyperbolic. Just hyperbolic sine squared plus actually minus hyperbolic cosine squared is equal to one. So because of that Pythagorean identity, that's why those have a minus downstairs. Okay? You can just remember, I'm telling you why they are the way they are, but you can just remember regular sine and cosine has a plus downstairs and hyperbolics have a minus. Okay. Then signs will have the K, the number. Okay. So whatever number that was in the angle, it'll have that number in the numerator. Cosines though will have S's. Okay. So when I um, took my test, when I did this, I wrote down all these formulas first thing before I even started the test, just so that I had them there. And I did all that thing in my head, right? Where I sine and cosine have the plus, hyperbolics have a minus, all the sines should have K, and all the cosines should have S. Okay. And the other one that's a little bit hard to remember is B, the n factorial over S to the n plus one. Um, but again, if you're doing a memory dump, just I would, that's the one that I would like try to just stare at for two seconds before I hand you the test, right? <laughs> and then you scribble it down. Because the other one's not so bad. One is one over S. The other one is one over S minus A. That, those, and you're going to use them a lot if you're doing the homework. So those will just, you'll know them. It's the other ones that are a little tricky. Excuse me. So 
So we're gonna do one little example with these. And then we'll go and look at 4.2.1. Probably just the inverse. Because I do want to put the inverse formulas and the regular transform formulas right by each other. So you can see what I say when I when I said you only have to memorize one set because the other is just the opposite. Okay. It literally is L inverses on all of these sides. And then the answers are these things inside the brackets. Right? So you'll see when I can put them side by side in a second. Okay, this problem, it would have been a long before, right? It would have been a long problem before. Now, it is not so long. One thing you need to know about Laplace transforms is they are algebraic transforms, okay? Which means you can add and subtract them, you can factor out coefficients, all of that good stuff, okay? They are algebraic terms, which means when I go to take the Laplace of 4t minus 10, that is the same as saying 4 times the Laplace of t minus 10 times the Laplace of 1. That's what I mean by they're algebraic, okay? I still, if you imagine the L's not there, don't you still have 4 times t, which is 4t, and 10 times 1, which is still 10, right? So that's what I mean by they're algebraic. You can manipulate them in this way. And you're going to have to manipulate them in this way so that you can apply those formulas, right? Because I don't have a formula for 4t. I only have a formula for t, okay? Now the formula for t, what is my exponent on this t? one. So when I plug it into that formula up there, all the little ends are going to become ones. Okay? So this is going to become 4 times 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1. And the Laplace of 1 is just 1 over s. Now what is one factorial? By definition, one factorial is just one. Two factorial is two times one. Three factorial is three times two times one, and so on and so forth, okay? But zero factorial is one. One factorial is one. All the rest of them are their own thing. Three factorial is three times two times one. 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? Okay. So then I have s squared downstairs, don't I? And then I have 10 over 1 minus s. The only thing they do in the book is they put the 4 and the 10 on top. And that's it. Instead of getting s squared at the bottom and putting them into one fraction, they leave it like this. And I'm, they're going to leave them like that because you don't want stuff with s's in the numerator. You just want to try to get stuff with s's in the denominators. Notice in these formulas, unless you had squares, right, there should be no s's in the numerators for all these ones, right? Okay, only if you have S squared are you going to have maybe an S in the top. And that's S squared plus K squared or minus K squared. I don't have S squared plus something squared or S squared minus something squared. So I do not want to have S's in the top here. Okay, now I definitely need you to have practice with these, right? Apparently 17 was a bad problem, so I crossed it out. I think it was making us do something that we've never seen before yet, so I just took it out. Um, but I want you to be able to transform. I think the first four of them are with the old definition, 
And then the rest of them are learning how to manipulate using the definitions, okay? The weirdest one to manipulate is going to be the one where you have K in the numerator. No, not K in the numerator. That's not the weird one. The weird one is T. Oh, no. I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking of the inverses. Those are the ones you have to manipulate. These, you just do the algebra part, right? The algebra breakup, and then you apply all the formulas. It's not hard, okay? laplace everything isn't going to be hard. Reverse laplace or inverse laplace is the one that's the harder one, okay? Let me zoom out a little bit because I want to put the inverse formulas right next to the Laplace formulas. Do you see them? They're the same exact thing. So you don't have to have a whole other set. <laughs> You don't need to memorize two different things. All it is, is if I Laplace this and I got that, well then if I Laplace inverse that, I'm gonna get one, right? If I plug this in and did something to it and this was my output, well guess what? If I put that back, if I inverse it, it's gonna get me back to T to the end. This is the weird one that's gonna be weird to manipulate when you inverse Laplace it. Cause you have to have that in factorial, which is weird, okay? Here, if I Laplace inverse this, I should get e to the at. If I Laplace inverse that, I should get sine to the kt. If I Laplace inverse this, cosine, right? Laplace inverse that, hyperbolic. Laplace inverse that, hyperbolic. That's all these are doing. It's just the reverse of the other one, okay? So you don't have to memorize two. You just memorize the one. And then if you really, really have to because it confuses you, write this out after you already have this. Right? So once you have that, you're literally just going to write Laplace of Laplace inverse of this guy equals 1. Laplace inverse of this thing equals t to the n. Laplace inverse of this thing equals this. Laplace inverse of this thing equals that. So on and so forth. Right? So you only have to remember one set of formulas. You do not have to memorize two. Okay? But this is where it gets weird. I'm going to take a 10 minute break. Not me, but <laughs> let me pause it real quick. Okay, this one is going to be 4.2, but the first part. Okay, so there's two parts to 4.2. Second part has to do with the derivatives. But for right now, we just need to learn how to undo what we do. Okay, so we're gonna be transforming some functions. We need to know how to undo that, right? Just like when you do u sub, you put the u's in, but then you take the u's back out. So we have to know how to do this. Um, so if we look at the first problem, it already has the separate fractions for us, okay? So it already has one over s squared minus 48 over s to the fifth, okay? It's already got it separated for us. We don't have to do anything in that regard, okay? If they are not separated, if they would have given me the problem as s cubed minus 48 over s to the fifth, I would have had to try to separate them. And this one particularly would have been easy to separate, right? If you just split it apart and then reduce it. But when you start to get binomials downstairs and multiple binomials downstairs, it's not so easy to separate it. And that's why I had mentioned earlier that you're going to have to get used to partial fraction decomposition because that's going to be required. You have to split these fractions up, okay? Um, if you look at the formulas, none of those formulas have binomials, more than one binomial, right? This has a monomial of S all by itself. This one has S to any power. This one has S plus or minus something, right? This one has s squared plus or minus something. All of these have s squared plus or minus something. Nowhere in there do you see two factors with s in them, right, downstairs. So that's why when we get the problems and we have to inverse them, we have to separate them into separate, separate uh, fractions, okay? Here it's nice, of course, they're gonna take it easy on us at the beginning, right? <laughs> and then they'll build, okay? 
So for right now, it is the way it is. Now, just like the Laplace is an algebraic tool, so is the inverse Laplace. So I can separate this as the plus inverse of one over s squared and then minus 48 Laplace inverse of s one over s to the fifth. Now I do this by default and then I put the factorials back in. Okay. Some people can envision the factorials like they know what all the factorials are. And so then they will peel that 48 and keep the parts that they need and throw out the parts that they don't need, okay? That is totally okay to do. I don't do it that way, okay? I just don't like to think <laughs> if I don't have to, okay? I'd rather just get into the mechanics of it and do it, okay? So for the first one, you notice that you have a square downstairs, right? Leave me some space here. I'm supposed to have s to something plus 1 downstairs. So how could I write s squared as to something plus 1? One? 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1. Which means that in the numerator, I would have to have 1 factorial. Now, I already know that 1 factorial is 1, right? So what I had before is actually equivalent to what I have now, isn't it? Isn't this part here equivalent to this part here? Right? The second one. I can write it as s to the what plus 1? Four. 4 plus 1. Which means I need a 4 factorial up there. That is not equivalent to what was up there before. So in order for me to make this equivalent, if I throw a constant in, I've got to take that constant out at the same time, right? So then I'm going to divide by 4 factorial. That way it's like I didn't do anything, right? I didn't change the problem. This is equivalent to the line up right above it, okay? And then I do the simplifying. So now that we have this in the right form, I can actually Laplace transform it. This whole thing will become t to the what? What's in red there? 1. So this whole thing will become t to the 1. Then I have this, and this will become t to the what? 4. To the 4. And then I just have to simplify that fraction. What is 4 factorial? Remember what it is. It's 4 times 3 times <coughs> 2 times 1. What do I get when I multiply all those numbers together? Mm -hmm. And if I simplify that, I actually get t minus 2t to the 4th. And this is it. Okay? Now, someone else, and I'm blue, someone else may have seen this, and they knew, they knew they had to take out the negative, right? Because none of those little plazas have a negative inside. Um, but they knew they were going to have to have a 4 factorial on top, which they also knew was 24. And if you know that, you can break up the 48 into 24 times what? Times 2. And this is still equivalent to that. And you still end up with the negative 2 t to the 4th. Exactly like I ended up with negative 2 t to the 4th. But that's if you recognize it, right? If. Big if. Okay? I don't try to memorize all my factorials. So all I do is I put it in what I need and I take it out what I need, okay? And I'll mess around with the reducing and stuff later, okay? So this is just another option. It's not wrong to do. It's just not what you'll see me doing, okay? And I'll be honest, I even do it with the one. <laughs> I do. So I take this guy right here and I put him on the outside 
And if I threw a one factorial down there, up there, then I put a one factorial down here. And it just happens that that's just a one, right? And so it doesn't really even matter, okay? But I just do it by default to all of them, okay? Okay. So let's look at this one. A lot of manipulation we have to do here. It's just, I want to give you examples of these things so that when you're doing them on the homework, you're not completely in the dark as to how do you get this to look like one of those, right? <laughs> I want you to have some examples. So I tried to pick all the little different things that could happen. Um, for this one, just looking at it, I'm gonna put this other one side by side, the formulas. Does anybody have an idea of which one it might be. It may not look exactly like it right now. We can manipulate. But which one do you think it could be? C. Yes. The only thing is, is I can't have a coefficient in front of that S, right? So you're gonna have to factor out that coefficient, okay? So this is where the manipulating part comes. And every time you do something, just keep writing the inverse. Most people don't. They just put it back at the end. But I do. Just so I don't lose focus. Um, but if I factor that 4 out, it will be 4 <laughs> plus what? I mean, S plus what? Yes. My brain is putting the stuff in the wrong spot. Okay. Then we know it's an algebraic multiplier, right? So we can take that one fourth out of the Laplace altogether. But we're still stuck with s plus one fourth downstairs. So I took the four that was here downstairs and a one that was upstairs. But even if I took a one, I still have a one upstairs, right? Is it one times one, one? and four times this stuff down here is what I had before. So these are equivalent to each other. Make sure they're each line is still equivalent. Otherwise, you're doing like a whole invented problem, right? Not the actual one you were given. Last thing I need is I need a minus, not a plus, right? So if it really, really bothers you, then change it to s minus a negative one-fourth. Okay, so that's s parentheses and then a negative one-fourth inside the parentheses. And now I can apply my transform. I can do it now. I'm gonna have this one-fourth here, but then I'm gonna get e to the what exponent? Mm -hmm. And normally the book does not leave it like that. They write negative t over 4. Okay, but it's the same thing. But the only formula that had a binomial with s downstairs was that e function, right? So that's how you knew you had to manipulate it. So my goal was just to get the S by itself and then to get that minus in there, okay? And the A is whatever it is when I'm done. Now this one is tricky. I have the S squared plus nine which means if I have s squared plus a number, I'm gonna have sine or cosine, okay? So already right now, I know I'm gonna have sine and cosine. But if you look at the formulas for sine and cosine, one has a constant and the other has an s in the numerator. 
Neither one of those formulas has two terms in the numerator, do they? Which means I'm going to have to split this up, okay? So when I split it up, I'll do it in baby steps. In the homework solutions, I don't do it in baby steps. I just go, I'll show you where I go in, in a minute. For here, I'm just gonna put 2s, and then I'm gonna do minus Normally, I just go from the original to this. Which still has to get manipulated, okay? But that's usually what I do. I always take my coefficients out of the Laplace or the Laplace inverse. I just always do it by default. And it cuts down the number of steps I have to do, right? So instead of separating and then taking out the coefficients, I just take the coefficients out from the very beginning, okay? Now the first one is ready to go, it is. The second one is not. So the first one, remember, cosine is gonna have the S. So for the first one, this should be two and then cosine of how many T's? It's supposed to be cosine of kt, but the k comes from k squared downstairs. What is k downstairs? k would have to be 3 here because 3 squared is the 9, right? So that means this would be a 3. However, the other fraction. I also have a k equal to 3, right? But in order for me to turn that into sine, whatever that k value is downstairs should also be upstairs according to my formula, which means I should also have a 3 up here as well, and I don't, right? So if I put one there, I have to take one out at the same time, don't I? And so then now I have k at the top and s squared plus k squared at the bottom, which means this part will change into sine of 3t. But then what will the coefficient in the front be? Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing I would have got if I would have split the six, right? into three and then a two outside. So if I had already seen it ahead of time, I could have done it accordingly, And I, but I still would have got the two, it doesn't matter, okay? Whether you see how to split it or you don't, you just throw in the number and then divide by that number, you'll still get the same answer, okay? But that's it for this one. But I did want you to see how your, your brain is supposed to be seeing these things, okay? When you see C squared, or C, S squared plus a number, you cannot have two terms in the numerator. You have to split it into two separate fractions. And then it's trying to get S all by itself in the numerator and then trying to get K all by itself in the numerator, okay? Come on, where's the other page? There it is. Okay, this one. Anybody want to take a guess as to what I'm going to end up with here? You're going to end up with two exponentials. That's something I've never seen. Hmm? Oh, nice. So you have two binomials downstairs, right? Which don't have a square, which means those are e's, e to the something, okay? The problem is, is you're not supposed to have s's in the numerator, and you're not supposed to have two binomials downstairs at the same time. So guess what that means? Partial fraction decomposition, right? 
we have to figure out how to write this so that you have something over s minus 0 0.1 and then something else over s plus 0 0.2 because that I can change into a double negative, right? And it's still going to be an E. But what the heck would be the coefficients of these E's is what we need to figure out, okay? So we have to do the partial fraction decomp. Now it's weird because it's got decimals, but you can make them go away if you really, really want to. They don't bother me. I have a calculator. <laughs> Just leave them alone, okay? So I'm going to do the partial fraction. So I get 0.9S. And if I multiply, I'm imagining these L's are not there, okay? So it's just this fraction equal to these two fractions. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. If I multiply by this denominator, then on this fraction, the S minus 0 0.1 will cancel, but I'll still be stuck with A times S plus 0 0.2. And for here, the S plus 0 0.2 will cancel, but I'll still be stuck with B times S minus 0 0.1. On the left-hand side, they both cancel, right? And you'll be left with 0 0.9S. That's how you get rid of fractions when you're solving equations, right? Multiply by the common denominator. Whatever you have left will not have any fractions in it, okay? And then from here, however you do it, some people will say let S equal negative 0 0.2 and then figure out what the new equation is and then say let s equal 0 0.1 and get the second equation and solve the system that way. That is one way, it's not wrong, it's just not the way I do it, okay? What I do is I equate term by term, okay? So first thing I do is I expand these parentheses and I get as plus 0 0.2a plus bs minus 0 0.1b. And then I create my system using the coefficients. So on the left-hand side of the equation, the coefficient of s is 0 0.9, right? <coughs> on the right-hand side, what coefficients for s do I have? I have this guy and this guy, right? Those are the only two guys with s's. So I'm just going to have a plus b, just the coefficients. On the left-hand side, I have no constants whatsoever, which means I'm going to be using zero. And on the right-hand side, I have this constant and this constant. It's not constant because there's no S's, okay? So I have 0.2A minus 0.1B. And then that's the system that I need to solve, okay? And so I think the easiest way for me to do that is for me just to multiply the top equation by a point 0.1 because then I'll have positive point 0.1b and negative point 0.1b and then the b's will just cancel and I'll be able to get a. Okay, So I'm going to take this top equation and multiply it by 0 0.1 and I'm going to put the result down here. So I get 0 0.09 equal to 0 0.1a minus 0.1b, or not minus plus. So each one of these guys times 0.1. Then when I combine, these are gone, and I just have this equation. And if I solve for a, I'll get that a equals 0. 0.3. And if you're not sure, just use your calculator, right? 0 0.09 divided by 0.3 is 0.3. Then we go back and we plug in A into either one of the original equations. I would rather like the top equation because there's no coefficient in front of B. Because B is who I'm trying to find, right? So I would try to pick the equation that doesn't have anything in front of B. So I'm going to plug it back into the top equation, which means I have 0 0.9 equal to 0 0.3 plus B. How do I solve for B? Mm -hmm. So then I'll end up with 0 0.6, right? So now I know A and now I know B. So now I know what this is going to 
turn into B? It's going to be 0 0.9. No, I'm sorry. What was it? 0.3. Mm -hmm. So 0 0.3 for A above this factor. And then 0 0.6 above this factor. And if it really bothers you with that as a plus, to me, I just take the opposite. But if you're really trying to make it look exactly like the formula, then just do a double negative, right? Isn't that the same as a plus? Okay. And then because I have an algebraic manipulator, this is a Laplace, I can take the 0 0.3 out if that happens to be bothering you as well. And you can take this one out and you can even separate it. So I'm Laplace inversing each term and as I Laplace each term, I'm taking out the coefficients, okay? So I'm doing two steps in one. So I'm separating it and I'm taking out the coefficients. But now everything is exactly the way it needs to be for me to use that formula. Okay, and the formula says I'm going to have this coefficient, of course, because it's just the multiplier, but then I'm going to get e to the 0.1t. And over here, I'm going to have this as my constant multiplier, and I'm going to get e to the negative 0.2t. But there was a lot of work to go into that, right? The biggest problem you're going to get with the systems of equations is losing focus on where you're at because there's a lot to do. This is, I just did it with one thing, right? Imagine you're going to have to Laplace it. You're going to have to Laplace two of them. Then you're going to have to solve that system. And then once you have the answers, you're going to have to inverse Laplace both of them. Okay, so there's a lot <laughs> that's going to happen at the end. Okay, but right now we're just doing baby steps, baby steps. Okay, we'll have lots of practice. Um, in this chapter, this section, I, I know people don't like to go up to the board, but I'm going to make you go up to the board <laughs> because we're going to have a day where I want you to try to do them. Okay, we'll have them be like two people together, not just by yourself, right? Um, so you can kind of bounce off of each other. Um, but yes, because I need you to practice and I need to see you practice these because there's a lot going on and they're long. So I'll probably only be able to have like two groups up here at the same time and maybe one group on paper, okay? It's going to be a lot. But I need you to practice. <laughs> I need you to get them, okay? Because um, there's going to be one on the test and they just take a long time and I need you to be able to do it, okay? Okay. I know we don't like board work. I don't like board work. I don't even like group work, but still. <laughs> you have to do it. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I am not, we don't even have any time. I can't see because there's a glare, but we are not going to have time. So we'll go into the derivatives, the Laplace of derivatives, the next class. Okay, so we're going to stop here. Let me go so you can see the homework. I'm making you do a bunch of them. There's a reason. I need you to practice these because these parts are only parts of the big problem at the end, okay? You cannot get the test correct if you can't Laplace transform and you can't inverse Laplace transform, okay? You have to be able to do those two things. So we will most likely on Tuesday knock out the rest of 4.2, the derivative junk, and then we'll start doing the DEs, and then we'll start doing the systems of DEs, okay? So by Thursday, we're gonna be working, okay? Like in class, doing problems, especially these systems, okay? Because I need you to practice them before we have that test. And then maybe the next Tuesday, the next, or that Thursday, we'll review, right? So you've had at least a little bit, got your feet wet a little bit, then review, and then the following Tuesday would be the test, okay? 
because this is it there's not a whole lot going on in this chapter it's just gonna be a lot of doing things okay this is one main concept that's it okay i'm done talking you guys are free to go <laughs> let me stop this